بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وآل آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وأوف بالعهد إن الأهد كان مسؤولا فلفل promise fulfill the covenant surely every promise shall be questioned about Alamna Ibn Kathir rahimahullah has mentioned under this ayah hifdhu asrar al-nas khuluq azim min akhlaq al-islam this is an important quality from the salient features and qualities of good character for the people of iman is to keep a secret وَأَمَانَةٌ مِنْ أَمَانَاتِ الَّتِي يَجِبُ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ أَنْ يَحْفَظَهَا And it is a trust from amongst the trust which is necessary on a believer to preserve and protect. So this is a covenant with Allah Jalla Jalaluhu wa Rabbu Al-Alameen a transaction of trustworthiness وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَعُونَ to be particular about what you hear and what you see. Not everything should be exposed. Unfortunately, through technology nowadays, this has become a breach in our trust with Allah Rabbul Alameen, where we forward everything we get, we post everything we see. Nabi alayhi salam in the rewite of Jabir radiallahu an Tirmizi, إِذَا حَدَّثَ الرَّجُلُ الْحَدِيثِ ثُمَّ الْتَفَتَ فَهِيَ أَمَانَةِ When somebody speaks to you, then as soon as you leave the gathering, it is an amana. Alamma Mubarak Puri has mentioned with regards to this hadith, تَحْسُنُ الْمَجَالِسِ أَوْ هُسْنُ الْمَجَالِسِ وَشَرَفُهَا بِأَمَانَةِ The purification of any gathering is what is discussed in that gathering is not breach. There is no contravention or infringement. So what your WhatsApp chat is is confidential. It should not be shared. It is a majlis which is an amana by copying the words, the text, screenshotting and forwarding that is a khiana. It's a complete breach and betrayal to the highest degree. The fact that that was a conversation between you and your brother or certain groups have been created which require the trustworthiness. Somebody said something, somebody replied. Before they reply, look what he's saying. So this is violating your brother's trust. Likewise, voice notes, emails, we want privacy for our own lives, but we breach everybody else's privacy. So Dean has highlighted the importance of privacy. R recording a conversation without permission is breach of privacy. So Dean has emphasized this so much that in the rewrite of Muslim Sharif, Nabi alayhi salam has mentioned, Inna min a'adhamin aman. إِنَّ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ الْأَمَانَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Amongst the greatest trusts which we will be answerable to Allah on the day of Qiyamah الرجل يفضي إلى إمرأته وتفضي إليه ثم ينشر سرها A person is considered breaching the trust when he is intimate with his spouse and he exposes their interaction Allah forgive one and all. The situation today is quite drastic where a husband Billah, takes pictures of his wife in the intimate positions. Some say we keep it private on our phones. Even if somebody doesn't hack into the phone and releases information or blackmail a person, you are answerable to Allah that Majlis was in Amana. And you transferred that majlis to your phone. Worse than that is allowing another male or female to be present and watch. And now becoming the norm is adding add a partner, a wife swap, 
a swingers club, Nawaz Billah, Allah protect the Ummah one and all. Imam Nawawi with regards to the commentary has mentioned that في هذا الحديث تحريم إفشاء الرجل ما يجري بينه وبين امرأته This is forbidden to expose your private moments or even describing anything or even a description of your wife. Allah Munaw is mentioned, mentioned thumma yanshuru sirraha. This is a secret and nothing of that can be exposed. So we ourselves forget privacy breaches. We ourselves as an ummah have been breached. And we need to be very careful and cautious. The hearts have become dead. Our hearts have become numb. And sins have become so arm and common that a person who refuses to be partisan to that becomes blacklisted. When did you become a Buzruk? So at a certain stage, Ma'asiyat and Sadiyat sin become so common that eventually the evil of that sin is no longer evil. We consider it good. It becomes the norm. Like there was a story of two friends who decided to go for a game of golf on a Saturday afternoon. So the wife gave one of the her husband a, a hidayat and guidance, strict instructions. Be back by four o'clock. I need to go shopping. So four o'clock happened. Nothing. No husband. Five o'clock, six o'clock. And he arrived at 7 p.m. The wife upset screamed. Where on earth have you been? So the husband said, honey, you know, a terrible thing happened, something bad happened. We made it to the first green when my buddy dropped dead of a heart attack. So I felt sorry his bosom buddy now had passed away. He said, shame, poor. Uh, he's so awful. I feel him sorry. I feel you sorry. So the husband said, you telling me the rest of the 17 holes was hit the ball and drag him, hit the ball and drag him. He needed to finish the game. Your dead friend is not important as finishing the game. So we finishing the game of dunya, but qabr, akhirat, hashar, accountability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not there. So moving back to the topic of privacy, the different levels of privacy. Level number one is a very basic, which is easy, it's economical, and... Uh, around the average person may have thus privacy measures in place, which is uh, common. But we need to move on to level two, where your utilities to your smartphone, to your electronic devices, everything is secured. Even your license plates, it may be difficult for a person to trace you. And anything that you have confidential is not available. And whatever is available is shredded. From the simple things that you use daily and you uh, throw in the garbage to details. Here if a private investigator has been dispatched, he will struggle. Level three, this is a high level of privacy. So where a person moves to another location, their home, their rental property, their vehicles, their names are all ghosts and it is probably registered on anonymous limited liability companies and the most basic details from your tax returns to your email, internet, etc. everything is top secret. Yeah, if a person needs to track this one, then it's, it's, it's very difficult. And the level four is the highest level where a person duplicates the federal witness security program. And uh, this is, is, is the hardest level to crack. Obviously, when the feds do it, then it's legal. But when you do it, it's a felon or illegal. But it's a separate topic on its own. Yeah. A person has burnt all his bridges from his friends to his relatives. They are distant memory. You have to cut out ties 
from everyone, including hobbies, including certain uh, things that you, that you you treasure and you love, and a person will have to go completely off the grid. There will be, have to be no trace, obviously, on the onset and the coming of Dajjal based on the need. We are mentioning this because whatever is needed for the time, we need to be prepared. And generally, people are very trusting. So from your attorney to your banker to your doctor, the, the, you have to identify levels of breach and how much can you let your guard down. Let's take, for example, one of the biggest, largest bank theft in U.S. history at that time was the regard to a person by the name of Stanley. And he was working for a company under contract to develop a backup system for the Pacific National Bank wire room. Well, this person went in, he learned transfer procedures. He found out that the bank agents would frequently write down the daily transfer code. So in 1978, he, weighed, he, he made his way through the transfer room, took note of the code, memorized it and left. Then, using social engineering techniques, he made a few phone calls and he had $10.2 million wired to an account which he had set up. So, after this money was wired and he planned it, he set up a diamond transaction with a merchant to pick up 43,200 carats, which is around 8.6 cages of diamonds, to a company which he purchased. Then he got those diamonds to be placed somewhere where he impersonated a diamond courier and he picked up the diamonds at that point, put it in his checked luggage and returned to LA. So this would seem almost impossible and the story of what happened afterwards uh, is, is uh, interesting. But a breach of such magnitude was possible. Why he found the loophole? So this, this nature of being laxed and, 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 and just taking things for granted is very dangerous. Many a person says that, yeah, and I believe that my phone calls, my texts, my emails, my social media can be seen by others. Uh, and that's it. But that's quite disappointing because... Are we ready to expose ourselves to multiple vulnerabilities? Like how a magician has used sleight of hand to make objects invisible. The objects do not physically disappear or become invisible. It's somewhere in the background hidden. Likewise, each person, all the details are being currently collected and stored without us noticing. You don't see it, it is not apparent. But because we are oblivious and lax in this matter, we've put ourselves in a predicament. So you don't need to, to, to put yourself forward to be a volunteer online. But the fact that you engage in these platforms, these various platforms, without any caution, guaranteed it has been harvested by corporations, by governments. And that information has been stored. Every detail of what email which email, to who, what, the text, the call, the conversation, what you search for online, what you buy, what uh, you travel, where you travel, when you travel, how you travel, by car, by foot. And uh, the volume of data being collected every day increases exponentially. So we have to learn some good practices. 
a great weakness and it's due to our laziness is we don't have strong passwords. So in around 2014, somebody will say it didn't happen to me. Very high profile celebrities and VIPs around the globe, plus minus 300 of them, were breached and compromised. Somebody will say, but how is it possible? It takes an ordinary person to know that you will use EPB. Uh, it's a uh, Alcom soft phone password breaker. So this is used by government agencies, law enforcement uh, to hack into access to the iCloud accounts. So this is one of the tools. But once you have the EPB, you will have to get the targets, username and password information. So that's also quite easy to get the username and password. The person has a password hacking mechanism which uh, is been engineered and specifically designed for acquiring iCloud credentials then uh, using iBrute which is this uh, password hacking tool someone will impersonate the victim download, download a full backup of the cloud storage on the iPhone data now iPhone supposed to be Apple has as 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 promoted to be a very secure device but when a person uses this methodology then not only the basic information but everything a complete clone will be visible so one is you you hack into the account here is you duplicate everything of that person from their phone numbers to the emails to to the images, to the videos. So a person needs to have a stronger passwords. And for that, a person must get a, 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 a penetration tester, someone who is paid to hack into a computer network and find vulnerabilities. So even uh, forget private people, but even large corporations and executives are very negligent of this and it's very lazy. When it comes to passwords, so for example, the CEO of Sony, his password was, his name was Michael Linton, and his password was Sony ML, his initials three. That was his password. So his emails were hacked into and spread and exposed on the internet. So we, we take it for granted, but, but this is a very important aspect as well. Like keeping secrets, your life is a secret, it's an amanat. So consider it part of Dean of preserving. You should have been uploading all of this here, but worst case, at least be particular. And, and another breach, which uh, a group in 2015 called the Impact Team sold data of uh, Ashley Madison. Now mentioning this example specifically, because this was a site of adultery and fornication. It promoted promiscuity, illicit relationships. So people who wanted to have a glorified clandestine relationships, they would go to this website for having an extramarital affair. And uh, they threatened to expose the usernames and passwords. And uh, the site, they shut down. But they didn't get what they want, so they released the information. 60 gigabytes of data, including the user details and uh, very important sensitive information. For example, there was a report of 1,200 Saudi Arabian email addresses. Now, what's the law in Saudi Arabia for extramarital relationships? So that became a mean, this leaked database was a means for extortion. Likewise, many, many people were extorted for money, for Bitcoins. Can we imagine what a big database and this database was breached? Some people even committed suicide because this wrecked their lives. But uh, when the passwords were collated of 11 million users, then they were common passwords like one, two, three, four, five, or add on extra digits six, seven, eight, nine, 
or the word password, the word default, ABC123, your everyday run of the mill passwords. So you get password cracking tools. Have I been a certain website where you can check if you've been compromised as well? So we need to go to those sites and see. Has your email ever been compromised? Your cell phone has been compromised? Is the simple methods which could be done and the more detailed uh, ways of checking to identify the breach to secure yourself to make sure this doesn't happen. Likewise, there are solutions now what to do. Inshallah, Allah give us tawfiq of practicing making amal. The amal for today is in al abda idha tasawwaka to use the miswak. When a bandai servant of Allah uses the miswak and performs salah, qam al malak khalfahu, an angel stands behind him, fayastami'u li qira'atihi, and he listens to his qira'at and comes closer and closer on every verse that he reads, hatta yada'afahu ala fihi, until he puts his mouth to the person's mouth, and everything that emanates min al qurani illa sarafi jawfil malak, it goes directly into the angel. So Nabi Al Islam has emphasized Fatahiru Afwahakum Lil Quran. Purify your mouth for the Quran. Wahiru Dawana and Ilhamdulillah Yurabba.